The Cube at OpenStack Summit Atlanta 2014 is brought to you by Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. And Red Hat. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Welcome back, everyone, live in Atlanta from the OpenStack Summit. This is SiliconANGLE's The Cube. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman. Stu, uh, wrap up for day three, our final day, three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Again, another Cube uh, came in. We came, we saw, we kicked some butt, did a lot of interviews. Um, great commentary, not a lot of customers. We wanted to see, we hope to see some customers, not a lot. But let's, let's put a bow on the show and let's kind of summarize what we found. Um, I'll just start at the high level for me. I think you know, it really is about the debate around you know, organic community growth with the big players involved. And I think what you're seeing with OpenStack is, Stu, you're seeing an absolute solidarity around the community. Developers are here, operators are here, you get users and developers together. This is a DevOps show, clearly a DevOps show. This is the future of the open cloud, Amazon, OpenStack, mixing in a lot of enterprise grade kind of messaging and all those, those components. So certainly a DevOps show. Um, HP and IBM here in force. HP has more than IBM. IBM's people are here, but HP's got hundreds of people. This is really HP's coming out party in, in my mind, of really coming in saying, we want to participate. They threw a high class party last night, very high quality, which is, they're, they're known for high quality, so I was very impressed with that. They've been active in the sessions and active in, in the community, so that was key. But also Red Hat, right? So Red Hat, uh, making a big presence here, and then I'll see today's Wall Street Journal article really try to drop the bomb on them. I think that's an indication that Red Hat is winning. When you see the negative articles coming out, especially from the Wall Street Journal, which was weeks under, under construction, they did that story over, over a couple of weeks, um, comprehensive article, I mean, we're going to dig into it, but I think it's a little bit off base. That being said, Red Hat is getting a lot of attention. So Stu, what, what is your take on all this? Yeah, so, so John, first, you know, Open source, you know, is just such, you know, a growing force in the industry right now. A uh, quote I loved is that one of the keynotes Dave Meyer brought to us is, we used to have the triangle and say, you know, I need good, fast, cheap. And now it's, it's fast, fast, fast. Many people said if I can get fast, I can actually catch up on any of those other things. So, you know, why are all companies that, that are here embracing open source? Uh, last week we're at EMC World and, and I got a great line from Paul Moritz. And he said, you know, why did we in embrace, uh, you know, open source is because, you know, customers want solutions that can be standardized, and just the old way of doing things with standards just takes too long. So Pivotal, uh, you know, obviously is embracing open source, but then you look at another piece of the federation, VMware really has, uh, you know, since the Nicira acquisition, they moved further away from open source. Um, you know, VMware helped, you know, create the Neutron, uh, you know, stack here, uh, but then the community has taken it over, and VMware, while they're still working on pieces of it, they have not really embraced open source, um, and, and there are still large parts of the ecosystem here at OpenStack uh, that you know, position as an alternative to VMware or VMware not as the partner of choice. Um, but you know, other companies like uh, you know, in the network space, Cisco uh, and uh, you know, Brocade stepping up big time, you know, pushing into the open source and, uh, you know, environment because you know, if we want to create change in the next three to five years, you know, we can't do things the old way, we need to move faster. The question I asked everyone pretty much on theCUBE, Stu, was what, is the, what do you think is going on in the industry? And the, the consistent answer is, this is the cloud, the cloud is real, OpenStack is real. OpenStack is real, it's happening. There is way too much substantive conversations and momentum going on. Uh, now, with the debate on where in the, the hype cycle it is, we heard from the ex gartner analyst who, who he believes it's truly not even in close to sliding into the trough of disillusionment. That's still got to come with metrics as the key thing. And I think that is really what it's all about, the foundation to, pun intended, is set for the future. And I think what gets built on that foundation at OpenStack will be a basis of what the industry will look like for the next couple decades. In my opinion, that is the best news I think coming out of the show is that we're going to see an industry get created. And when we start to see metrics around this show and around this industry, where you're talking about total addressable market, TAM, as that's referred to, um, market share, customer deployments versus lines of code, then you're going to start to see it. And I think that is something that uh, you start to see in a much more of a, a ramping up cycle out of the trough of disillusionment, to use the Gartner analogy. I think that's going to be the key thing, Stu, and I think that certainly the mega trends of data, mobile, 
social, it's all going down on top of the cloud. Yeah, and, and John, you know, uh, I'm a little surprised this week that we didn't hear as much contention uh, as I expected. So, you know, there's a lot of projects in OpenStack. Uh, you know, Nova is solid. You know, Swift was the first, uh, you know, storage solution is, is solid. You know, Cinder's come, you know, along well and is doing uh, good. Um, you know, Solemn, I think I heard mentioned once out of all the interviews that we did this week, um, you know, how would, you know, Solemn, the, the uh, really if it's a PaaS solution, compete with things like OpenShift from Red Hat and Pivotal uh, Cloud Foundry. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of pro projects and, you know, what will move forward? Heat is, you know, really, you know, gaining a lot of traction to move uh, across orchestration and solutions, uh, I believe it's Trove, is database as a service. So helping to, you know, build that foundational layer and then start adding pieces of Above it uh, to, to give uh, real IT just a you know a broad tool set to be able to build that that next generation of infrastructure and in IT. Well, this is the cube. We're here at OpenStax. Do any final parting words? I thought it was a great event. Um, you know, we had great interviews. Um, Love the commentary. Uh, Love the excitement. Um, and, and, and again, you know, we would not be here if it was not for Red Hat and Brocade who stepped up to support us with some sponsorship to get here, and uh, we're excited to, and we hope to see everyone in Paris. We have a lot of good indications about Paris, and... Uh, yeah, to, yeah John, John, my, my one comment, this is very different from most of the shows that we cover. This is, you know, it's an industry show, um, but a lot of the people that come to this go to all the shows. Everybody I talk to here, uh, I'd say half the people were at Hong Kong, and those same half of people are also going to Paris, so the developer are all going every six months and participating in this. Um, I, I'd like to see by the time we get to the U.S. show next year uh, that you know you get more users and operators that are coming. Um, uh, Diane from uh, Red Hat talked about that you know we need to focus on uh, training and hands-on. I mean you know it's been a while since I've been to a tech show where there's not you know big labs uh, where people are getting their hands dirty. So we need to, you're transitioning from building OpenStack to really uh, building out those deployments, you know, getting the stuff in the operators' hands. Uh, fine-tuning some of the things, um, and then we can get more practitioners to really share their stories, new business value that they're creating, because th there are some cool stories, you know, like the digital tree guy uh, that we had on from Hollywood, uh, Dave Meyer was talking about, you know, Xfinity from Comcast, uh, you know, these are the type of technologies that are going to help, you know, power, you know, the industrial internet and, you know, sensors around the world. And uh, We had a guy who was in space that. on the cube, Mark Shuttle <laughs> Shuttleworth, founder of Ubuntu, was on, he was on the space station. I mean, this is a new, a cube first. Uh, any other highlights, too? Uh, I mean, so many, John. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's some really good thought leaders in this space. Um, yeah, I, I, I just learned a lot, and it, it's, it, it's still, you know, I'm not ready to say that OpenStack's taking over the world, uh, but it's an important place, a place in, and it's, it's uh, making its, its, its mark as to where the ecosystem is, um, and it, it's about the solutions that the companies are going to uh, build off of it. So, um, you know, most IT shops are not saying, you know, I want open source because it's open source. Uh, they're saying open source is going to help build the technologies out there, and and you know, it's companies like you know, HP, who's got 1,000 people working on their cloud. It's IBM, it's Red Hat that are going to help you know, pull together those solutions and help the enterprise get this done uh, to be able to you know, build the, you know, the, the hybrid cloud of the future. Okay, Stu, it's great to have you on. You did a great job. I would say your analysis was phenomenal this week. I got to say you, you're totally plugged into the cloud and that's pretty obvious um, because now it's not just in your wheelhouse of network, it's all the way up the top of the stack and you got it, this is right in, in, in the Wikibon wheelhouse. Uh, and we've always, yeah. I always said to Dave, it's, it's, it's storage at the center of the value proposition. And again, it proves that out. Yeah, and John, you know, you, you, you've been preaching about DevOps for years now and I mean, really it's, it's coming to fruition. Stu, I was there when Rackspace started uh, uh, OpenStack. I was there prior when they were trying to get this developer initiative to onboard developers. And Rackspace knew at the beginning that for them to be successful building the cloud, they had their own needs. And the future sometimes is invented by people having their own needs. In this case, Rackspace didn't have a lot of developers. They were trying to recruit developers and they realized that they had to essentially do with the community. So you know, hats off to Rackspace. And then, you know, I just got to say, you know, HP's been impressive, IBM's been impressive. So I think, that, I think this community will work, Stu, with the big guys and the community. So it's exciting to see the horses are on the track, the cars are on the track, whatever metaphor. I think it's not even national anthem on the baseball analogy. Um, West Coast offense, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's going crazy here at OpenStack. It's hyped up. Cats and, and dogs living together, yeah. mass pandemonium. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's Ghostbusters all over the place, Stu. This it's, is exciting. So I personally think it's going to be big. And uh, I want to thank the crew here. Guys did a great job. Mick, Andrew, Matt, 
and uh, of course uh, everyone else at home blogging and tweeting and of course uh, the CrowdChat was phenomenal. There were hundreds of people on concurrence all week. CrowdChat.net's our new innovative engagement container. Check it out, CrowdChat.net slash OpenStack. That's the transcript of all the conversations here uh, at OpenStack. So with that, I want to say uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in our next event. This is theCUBE signing off from Atlanta. <laughs>